Good morning. It's October 17th, 2022, and I'm happy to be with you here again this Monday morning. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries. This is an outreach ministry for those who are spiritual but not religious or who just haven't found that faith community yet that they connect with. Also, I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, where we share stories to inspire people to lean in and to overcome the difficult situations and experiences in life. Today, I'm jumping right in. Today's topic is a request. Uh, Kelsey had requested that I do a section or a session on how to build faith after a difficult thing has happened. Uh, say you've had a relationship with someone who has caused you trauma or heartbreak or had some other event in your life that just kind of blew up your faith and your trust in people and higher power. So that's what today is all about. And we just need to jump right in. There's going to be a lot of information here. So I wanted to make this, this is going to be powerful stuff that I'm sharing today. And I wanted to have it as uh, available and accessible to you as possible. I put together a workbook. It is in the Facebook group, Light, Life, and Love Ministries. And jump over there. It's a group. There's also a page, but the file, the workbook is in the group, Light, Life, and Love Ministries Spiritual Growth Group. So jump over there. And if you're new to the group, I'll make sure and approve your request after this video. But download that workbook. Use it as you go through this. Use it afterwards to review, but it'll be a helpful tool for you. Okay, so when we talk about rebuilding faith after a really difficult event in life, and those can come in so many different ways, it's helpful to understand initially how faith is built and developed to begin with. So for that, I go to James Fowler. James Fowler wrote a seminal work in 1981 where he put forth the stages of faith development. This is a seminal work. It is taught in universities and seminaries. It's used to understand how people grow. It's information that is important for therapists, for pastors, for spiritual directors and leaders. So we're going to take a look at that briefly. Now, the stages of faith, there are seven of those, but they start at zero, stage zero through stage six, and they have ages that go along with them. This does not mean if you fall in that age group, you are in that stage of faith. What this means is that when you are in this age range, this stage of faith becomes available to you. So we'll, that'll be a little more clear as we go along. So let's jump in. Stage zero is called primal undifferentiated faith. And this is from ages birth to age two. This is trust or mistrust, and it sets the groundwork for all other attachment and faith and trust issues later in life. Uh, if you've ever heard of attachment theory, this is the cru crucial time period for a healthy attachment, and it all boils down to this. Are your main caretakers responsible to your needs? When you cry as an infant, and this is before we have cognitive ability to sort out what's going on, but when you have a need, is your primary caregiver lovingly responsive to those needs? If so, that's going to set you up well for faith later in life. If not, it's going to make faith more difficult. And that is stage zero. Stage one then is intuitive projective faith. This is available to us when we are between the ages roughly of three to seven. And the we encounter faith with stories and images, the influences of others, and we get that intuitive sense of right and wrong and very innocent 
perceptions of how God influences the universe. So telling kids stories at this age is powerful it, across the board in every way, but this is the main way that kids learn a little bit about faith in a higher power, God, spirit, however you like to call upon that. Uh, they do not have the ability to think abstractly, though. That's going to be much later. So, But stories, images, and influences of others, and an intuitive sense of right and wrong, kids start to develop what is good and what is bad at this age. Stage two is the mythic literal faith. And this is available at ages 7 through 12. And this is where justice and fairness enter the picture. Doing good will yield good and doing bad will yield bad. Uh, God is a human image, often portrayed or thought about as the old man with flowing white hair and a beard and robes who lives on a cloud. Uh, metaphors are tricky at this age. We, as adults, like to use metaphors a lot. Kids don't get those. They're not capable of abstract thinking yet. You have to be able to think abstractly to get a metaphor. That's the literal definition of a metaphor. Uh, so there are a lot of misunderstandings in youth ages 7 to 12 until they develop that ability, until their brains grow and develop an ability to think abstractly. It's concrete only at this age. So they run into a lot of trouble then when they will read something like God is good and they experience something that is hurtful. They have a hard time reconciling those things. Okay, stage three Synthetic conventional faith. This is ages 12 all the way to adulthood. Many, many people in our world live in this stage of faith. And the thing about this stage of faith is the identity of our religious belief system is so intertwined with our identity of self as a person of faith. So any ideas that come up that conflict with one's belief, belief system, they're ignored because they represent too much of a threat to someone's personal identity. So if, uh, if you receive info, okay, let's go specifically here. So uh, evolution, for instance, Many people reject that outright because it causes a conflict with what they've learned in the past. And to incorporate that would require some rethinking and retooling of one's own identity. Can I be this and believe this? A way that I introduce this type of thinking is to mention an event that happened in our town. We had uh, an explosion in our town several years ago. Those who were too young to remember it know of it very well when the chemical plant in our town exploded. And I asked them, I will say, okay, so when the plant exploded, if there was a physicist and a poet who both witnessed this event and they wrote about it, would they write the same things? Of course not. The physicist would write out formulas that would explain what happened scientifically. The poet would have a completely different account of what it was and how it happened. Does that make one of them wrong? No. Both are true. This type of thinking is difficult and many people don't grow beyond this stage of faith because that thinking requires some internal retooling. Psychology and spirituality are intertwined. One presupposes the other. And to grow one, you have to also grow the other. So that's where many folks live is in stage three of faith development. Now, stage four 
is individuative reflective faith. This is mid 20s to late 30s. This is a stage where we go off and wrestle with our demons. This stage of faith is marked by angst and struggle. So if you're in your mid 20s, if you're in your 30s, and you have a lot of doubts, if you have a lot of struggles, you're growing in faith. Don't, don't believe that you're abandoning your faith because this is an important part of growth and development. Struggling with those beliefs, struggling with the big questions. This is a part of how you grow. Wrestle with those demons. We have many biblical examples, like Jacob of Peniel, for instance, comes to mind immediately, where biblical figures really wrestled with the big questions and with faith in that higher power. This is a necessary step in growing your faith. So don't let this um, make you think that you're losing your faith. They may take on... Um, the, your beliefs will take on a greater nuance and complexity. There will be uh, an openness to new and different ideas. Some may stick, some may pass on by, but they're all part of the struggle and the wrestling as different and new ideas collide. Stage five. Uh, some people reach this stage. It's not real common, but it's not uncommon either. This is a stage beyond the wrestling. I mean, you're always gonna wrestle, you're always gonna have questions, but this is the kind of coming back stage. A person at this stage acknowledges that there are paradox, paradoxes, that there are mysteries, and they can live with mystery and paradox. This is different than accepting and an ignorance to big ideas, but this is a willingness to live with the unresolved nuances, to sit with the big questions, if you will. This causes the person to move beyond conventional religious traditions and beliefs. A person at this stage of faith would be a vital and active church member uh, who recites creeds and statements of faith but knows that the truth can't be completely summed up in those. That the statements of faith, while fully held, that there's plus more. That's the hallmark of that stage five. Uh, the truth is always just a little beyond what is available to us. In stage six, this is rarely achieved. This level of faith Think Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, etc. This is later adulthood, if at all. And again, this is very rare. A person at this stage is not hemmed in by re religious differences or differences in spiritual beliefs among people in the world, but regards that regard all beings as worthy of compassion and deep understandings. These are the people that are spiritual giants long past their time on this earth. Now, I went through these stages of faith because it's important to, to know these and to know when in your life that you experienced the difficult event. So say you are early to mid-20s and you experienced trauma or you had uh, some kind of event in your life that caused you great heartache and just kind of imploded your entire world. Well, in your 20s, you're in that stage that is marked with the angst and the struggle. So you're already at that age where you might be wrestling with the bigger ideas. And if you experience trauma or emotional disruption, let's just say it that way, if you just experience emotional disruption at this stage, it's going to be difficult for a while. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. It means at this stage of your life, do the work you need to do to heal yourself and you will grow in your faith profoundly. Profoundly. 
It's not going to happen instantly. It's not going to happen overnight. But there is great reward in keeping going forward. You're going to have the big questions. Find someone who will allow space for you to ask the big questions and to sit with those big questions. At this stage of faith, these simple answers aren't going to serve you well. So find someone who can create that space where it's safe for you to acknowledge doubt, for you to acknowledge that you have questions and there aren't answers and to let you find your way through that, that struggle. Now, if we look back, we can see that in our infancy, if we did not have someone that cared for us, that was responsive lovingly to our needs, we're gonna have a difficult time then attaching ourselves to faith in God. We're going to have trouble trusting authority figures. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It means we're gonna to have to do some inner work, uh, find a therapist, find someone who can do some counseling and help you get to that point so that you can have that relationship with folks in your lives. And also that will make a this stage of faith more accessible to you. Now, as kids, um, when we're in that mythic literal stage of faith, if we're always thrown metaphors and all of these things, they can really confuse us. And many of us don't grow past that point. And here's my opinion why this happens a lot. If we are in a faith tradition that baptizes as infants and confirms us later in life, say at 12 years old, or if we're born into a tradition that dedicates us as a child and baptizes us later in life, say around 12 years old, there's a lot of preparation in that time. There's Sunday school classes, there are confirmation classes, there are different religious traditions have their own name and their own pathway for that. But what happens a lot of times after that confirmation or that baptism we quit going to Sunday school. We quit going to those classes. And that is a shame because we're right at that age when we can begin to think abstractly. So then when we don't have that at that point, when we go back as adults and engage in those classes, a lot of times we're still uh, talking in concrete terms about faith. Nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of faithful people in stage three, but if you want to grow your faith to a different level, then you have to wrestle with the metaphors. You got to be willing to have some doubts for a while and do some wrestling with wrestle your greater angels. Excuse me for a bit. But um, so that's just a quick overview of how faith is formed. And as you look at this and consider this, and again, this is available to you in a workbook file in the Facebook group, Light Life and Love Ministry, Spiritual Transformation and Growth. I'll make sure I put that link in the comments, by the way, so you can join that group and have access to this file. It's there and you can spend some time with it going through these things and you can refer back to the video as you work through it. Also, put a timeline on when you experienced more difficult things in your life and see how that age might affect or disrupt your faith at that age. But no matter what has happened in your life, no matter what difficulties you have had, it's not final. There is still a path for you to heal yourself and to grow your faith. I would love to support you in this work however I can. And if not I, then I will help you find that person who can. So I hope, I want to close here and just wish you well this week. I hope this week brings wonderful blessings into your life. If you want to talk about these things more, I love these kind of conversations. 
So reach out to me in person or through direct message, however you want to connect, and we'll continue this conversation. So be well and be blessed, and we'll talk again next week. Bye for now.